Okay, so here we are again. I'm just going to do like a quick walkover uh, as best as I can at this weird resolution. So, rollouts. You heal your demo first, he jumps to the door. This isn't just for you, uh, you guys. Um, it'll, it'll be like a rough guide to Viaduct for in general. So, demo gets healed to full. Sticky jumps to this door. Sticky jumps here. Ends up down here. Or he can go out right if he wants to go cliff. And then, you know, he picks a side. You can do an additional sticky jump if you wish. The other important thing is that neither of the soldiers skip jump to the door. I didn't see you guys do that in the demo, so that's good. I don't know why my achievements things are up here for this account. Uh, they don't jump to the door, so a lot of people will, you know, go to the door as so, but you shouldn't. Get both your soldiers 300. They both jump. Oh, it's so hard to jump at this resolution. Uh, and as they fly over, you buff both your scouts. They do their thing. And everybody goes out the middle door, besides perhaps the demo. We're going to assume that your demo's not gone cliff. So what he's going to do is he'll engage their demo somehow unless he's on cliff. Then he'll just stick up whatever he wants, try, uh, paying special focus to scouts. And then your soldiers will both jump over. The best way to do it is to have your roamer give a count. So I'm jumping one, two. I'm jumping in two. Anything like that. I'm jumping in three. And the reason you're doing that is because the pocket knows that he's got to jump two. And that way the jump follows, follows up. Because a lot of teams will have their roamer bomb in just because. And uh, he, he might do good damage. He might not. But... In any case, he won't. He's not being followed up on, so it doesn't matter. Your demo. Ideally, what'll happen is your demo will call right or left. So he's either gonna approach the right or approach from the left. There will be a scout with him that's standing in front of him to shoot any jumpers, clean up any rushing scouts, whatever. The other scout will run from the opposite side and attempt to pressure their demo or anyone who gets close. He's sort of the first layer of defense against your demo getting rushed. If he gets hurt at all, he comes back to the medic. Both your soldiers jump. Your roamer tries to jump really deep onto them. And your pocket aims to like land on the rock is the easiest way for him to manage life. Then you should have pretty solid control of the point, because as soon as your soldiers jump, your, uh, your pocket soldier jumps scout the aggressive scout should be coming back to get a heal you should be able to flash heal as medic flash heal your protector pocket scout and you know if your demo if he needs it you've clean you'll clean up any of their jumpers because you've got two scouts available if need be but at least one and perhaps the pocket and uh, and then you just roll the point and win the mat or win your first mid fight essentially the other way is if your demo goes cliff, you play more passively, so you've got your pocket like here, spamming, and your passive scout is like chilling, a good, you know, good spot, it's like he'll stand on these back panels. Then your roamer just kind of chills up here and doesn't jump, and he's just laying spam on the point, and you've got a scout over here to kind of help him, uh, but not to show himself to bait that much spam. And what you're trying to do is to get somebody to rush forward on you, and you just destroy them. And as soon as that first death goes out, your roamer who's over there should jump onto them, and your pocket should jump onto them. And uh, that'll pretty much mean you win mid, because they've already gone one down, and now they're all turned around. Your demo should then jump off of cliff. Yaddy yaddy. It's important also that if people get behind you, you should just pretend that they don't exist know in the back of your head that they'll be back and so keep an eye out for them you know turn around and look around but you can't have people chasing them because 
this is, oops, this is the important thing, not anything back there, or, you know, back there for that matter. Okay, other important facts. You want to, so soccer, hockey, or football, uh, and dodgeball have a common lines rule. And you want to envision these lines as being right here. So that's, that's one line. China, which is this bridge, makes a line across the whole part of the map. This rock on either side. So there, and there. And then this China line. And then this spawn door line. Those are certain lines. You know, they're like lines on a, uh, a soccer field. Do not cross those lines unless the rest of your team is prepared to cross them as well. So if your whole team is up here and you're not able to get past this point, nobody can go past this point. And that'll keep you in a good solid blob uh, formation. Or, you know, if you're up here, nobody can really cross into, into this back area, which is usually called no man's land that's a pretty self-explanatory thing and don't you know don't cross in down here and get engaged and stuff if your team's not ready yet uh, to do so so make sure that everybody's on the same line don't overextend uh, and the line rule is a good way to prevent overextension Roamers and scouts can sometimes break that rule, but they should be aware of wh which line, set of lines their team's standing on. So you're holding here and maybe your roamer goes for a deep jump or something to get behind them if they're over here. Okay, that makes sense. So don't, you know, don't treat it like it's gospel truth, but uh, be aware that... In general, you shouldn't cross the line unless the rest of your team's prepared to. Now I'm going to go over some holds. These are kind of what I like to do. Your default hold ought to be your, your med climbs up the rock, your pocket, med, and a scout who stands right there or right there. Chills and holds this door. The pocket just spams it. You can even spam all the way to the spawn door if you're right here. A little bad there. There you go. Spam all the way to the spawn door. So, you know, whatever you need to do. Then you have your roamer here. And he's just spamming here and also keeping an eye on the left side. You have your demo with a scout to protect him here. And he'll just trap up main however he sees fit. And the scout's there purely for protection and to watch the left side. Now, no team's going to be able to push into that very effectively. But you're leaving a side open. So they're eventually going to figure out that you aren't over here. So what do you do? You've got your roamer up. Yep. Yeah. So, I'm not used to rocket jumping with this. So, you've got your roamer over here. He'll jump forward. Okay, so he'll end up jumping from up there to about here. And he'll just seek to block them. Your demo and his scout protector buddy, who are back here, will just switch around. The demo can do a little sticky jump and end up right here at panels. And they're ready to lock them out this way, you know, very easily. The scout's there to protect. The roamer is blocking. And then your combo, who's up here with their scout buddy, will just cycle all the way over. So the easiest way to, to do this is you've got your pocket med and his scout buddy will just come over here. And they've now got main and left covered quite well. Uh, and then if they poke, if they start to back up or you notice them breaking a little, just switch places, have your pocket just switch places with your roamer. And then you're back to what you had and your demo and his scout friend are down here. Pocket med over here with scout protection 
and then your roamer is up here. And that's, you know, they can't get out. That should be the hold that you shoot for, because A, they can't suicide you very effectively, because if they've got their buffed people coming out, you're just, you know, you're taking all their buffs away, whatever, at any of the doors. It's really hard for them to get out. It's really hard for them to do what they want to do to you. Now, if you are on the cliff doing your thing, you know, with your combo, and you know, and they get out real quick, then you just have to back up and you hold in caution tape. And that's this right here. And now, the caution tape hold has your pocket and a scout watching Cliff. The scout is there so that if anybody tries to jump, he shoots them out of the sky with the scatter gun. And your pocket and scout chill here. Your demo is very close. He can trap up panels really easily. He can trap these boxes. He can trap here. He can trap here. He can trap there. And he can even put a trap here as well, but it would be less useful. And then he's got a scout protector in case anybody bombs uh, over panels or way up around here or does a double jump off of up there off that house. And he's just going to, you know, deny jumpers, do his thing. And your roamer can just stand on the rock usually and get pretty good spam. Or he can play in this tunnel. It really doesn't matter so much what he does. Just as long as he's in a good position to jump. The reason we I liked having him back more towards the point was if they assembled on cliff, which a lot of teams are gonna want to do, he can bomb onto them immediately and get their and try to get their Uber out before they uh, do anything to you. Now, if you if something has happened such that say you take the point and uh, such that sorry if anything has happened such that you don't have uber advantage but you do have the point you should just put your medic up here it's the safest spot on the whole map for him because if somebody does jump then he just walks down and they're stuck on the cliff or you can walk behind the panels whatever your pocket will stay down here we'll put crafty traps around so all the places I already mentioned you can have a scout back here on this wooden thing another scout your roamer a bit forward your pocket a bit forward now what's gonna happen is that once they show themselves you can have a scout running around poking both your soldiers are gonna bomb them immediately to get their uber out uh, scouts can help do that too med backs up and hopes he gets uber anything else reassembles on the cliff side so that'll be your demo and scouts and whatever else has managed to survive. And then you re-push the point with your Uber. So that's purely just defense, and those are the best ways to go about defense. You should really look into the hold I described here. It also opens you up to holding with crits, because in the event that you've got a crits to use, you can snake down into any of these doors. And if they try to run a suicide on you and they get wiped the first time you do it, you can usually get a pretty solid spawn camp going uh, for quite a while, really. Uh, spawn camping shouldn't really be your goal here because it's hard. Because they can just switch to heavy or, or whatever and uh, make your life really difficult. Note that I never really mentioned off-classes on defense because they're not particularly useful in my mind. Alright, so now we're going to talk about pushing because sometimes you won't have the point. Now what you're going to do is you sit in here and wait until everybody spawns. You can't have people going out by themselves poking around or they're going to die and it's just going to waste time. So what you do is you get a buffed soldier and you you make a call. He'll make a call, somebody makes a call, right or left. Don't go out the middle door. The reason you don't go out the middle door is, although it's the, you're, you know, this is me purely, so it's, some people are going to say different things. 
Middle door presents a lot of threats. There are doorways for people to hide in. There's the panels where people hide. And you've got a flank on either side of you. It's really hard to get out of here if they're forward holding on you because they can just envelop you. Anyway, so you make a call right or left. First guy with this, a, a soldier with 300 health comes out. He checks around, makes sure there aren't any stickies, makes sure there's not a guy hiding on the lamp. And then he gets about his business. And everybody else comes out, including your medic. But while that's going on, you need to have scouts watching these doors. Or vice versa, if you're over here, scouts watch middle and right door. And that's so if they're forward holding, nobody runs in on you and kills your medic while you're messing around in here. Also, make sure that your people don't get really crowded up in this door in case there is actually a sticky trap. Now we're suiciding. So you're all going to come from, say, cliff. You can do it from left, too. And you're going to count down. So the easiest way is to look at the time on the game clock and say, I'm jumping at 9.38 or whatever. And then you just, you all do your suicides all at the same time. It's also very important that you not spend time running around trying not to die. You should die as quickly as you possibly can. Because it's going to screw your team over if you die really late because it's going to delay their push. I would say bring your, don't leave your medic in spawn building with a scout. Just have everybody come up, make sure that they're all buffed to a certain point, and then pull your medic and a scout back. Uh, have the scout come back into this area, the spawn area first, just to make sure nobody's hiding on you, and then go into building and spawn as the suicides occur. The other advantage of this is that you're going to be about, you know, your med and that scout will be about here when the suicides land. And if you drop the medic or you get a lot of really good picks, you can just go ahead and tell the suiciders to back up. And you've turned your suicides into a, a slow, a, a push. Uh, not really a slow push. Uh, also, I should make as a point of fact, when you don't have the point, you have really quick spawns. And when you do have the point, you have really slow spawns. Pretty sure it's in the order of six to eight seconds. If you, uh, six to eight seconds if you're not holding, and eight to twelve, or maybe twelve to sixteen, I'm, I'm a little fuzzy, uh, if you do hold the point. So trading when you have the point isn't very effective unless the trade is hurting their medic in some way, or you're just decimating them. So... Really only popping their uber is worth sacrificing your life because even if you kill three people, they're all going to be back up well before you are and able to push. So it's a little risky. You can also run spy and sniper plays during suicides or pushes. I don't mind that as much, but it's hard to defend with those classes. It's especially hard to defend with sniper. Because once they know you have a sniper, they're not going to show themselves unless they're really dumb. And then it's hard to, to do stuff. You also end up seeding position a lot because your sniper's best spots are here and here. And so, you know, what are you to do? Because you're not going to be able to cover all of this very effectively with that sniper. And you're gonna, your best bet will be to seed ground to them so as to pull them into sniper sight lines. And unless your sniper is really good, that's not going to be very profitable for you. Also, if you ever face a heavy... Well, I should talk about in general pushing once you have the uber. You'll do the same exact thing called left or right. Send out your soldier, make sure he checks for stupid stuff. And then everybody will assemble. So say we've pushed left, you've got your pocket... Med demo here, scouts here, roamer waiting. If it's uber v uber, you want to just send your pocket in solo to try to get the pop out. Maybe your roamer could come in, and then your pocket's just going to bail. So he's going to try to get behind them, do whatever. And then the med's going to back up to the demo man, and 
either here or here if you push from left. And then you're going to re-push with your advantage in a group and hope that somebody's chased your pocket soldier. If not, tell him you are pushing and he will come back. And uh, attack them when you attack and sa help sandwich them, which is very effective. Um, if you come out this way, you're basically going to have pocket demo met up here. And same idea. If they don't have Uber, you want to Uber, you know, pocket demo scout. And basically what will happen is the pocket is going to go to push them out. The demo will help lock them and do a lot of damage to any groups. And your scout will chase Ubered and kill the people. Make sure the other scout knows that he has to help cap the point. Uh, but yeah, so that's sort of my l rough little guide to Viaduct. It's not, you know, different people will tell you different things about this map. But that's the way that I prefer to play it. Uh, so I hope you found this helpful and feel free to submit more demos. Uh, I would have I would have reviewed that demo in its entirety, but I, f I feel that it's more effective to, to just do this.